to start out on today's session, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna tackle the, the woman's gloved hands so that I can then remove the, the last of the of the masking fluid on this this detail brass rod here. And uh, I, I wanna start to develop their faces and I, I would like to develop more of the wood line. First off, I'm gonna do the woman's gloved hands and they are essentially black. You know, they're, they're black, just a shinier black. It looks like they're leather, leather mittens probably. So she has a cuff sticking out of the fur sleeve which looks a little brownish. So I'll use my neutral ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix. And as long as I have this here, I think I will add in a little bit of, actually I'm gonna use some burnt sienna to uh, suggest the shadows in the vicinity of the, the driver's eyes and the little girl's eyes. Way too strong. That looks pretty good. And that does too. I'm gonna suggest their mouths with a little bit of, uh, I think I'll go with referring to my my color swatches I think I like the cadmium red very dilute Let me make sure I've got the right one referring now to my map. I have confirmed that I've got the right cadmium red on my palette. I'm working from the correct well. All right, that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to, I'm gonna to move to the, to the wood line. And I think the first thing that I'll do is to paint in some, some green for um, hemlocks or um, spruce trees that are in the, the far background. I'm gonna start with my shadow green and um, that what I'm seeing in my photograph looks quite blue, so I don't think this is gonna be blue enough, but um, I'll just paint in the tree shapes and uh, float some blue into it, into the, the wet green paint. I'm leaving plenty of windows in these trees. I'm not really trying to make it look like what I'm seeing in the photograph because the photograph is just kind of a, a solid blob of a, of a dark blue-green color. And I'd like this to, to, to look more like several trees growing together. Load a little bit of 
This is uh, Thalo Blue, Windsor Blue. And the blue is mostly because of the distance, more atmospheric perspective. And the trees are, the, the, this is a little strong in color for these distant trees. And that was much too blue. I can fix that by floating some green back into it. I'm going to tidy up this where the trees meet the, the snowy meadow. That looks pretty good. Um, I think once this dries, I'll I'll add some some um, lighter value maybe even a little bluer trees in the back between the, those, those tree shapes that I just painted and be, you know, to, to appear to be behind them. Now I'm gonna start to, um, to create some tree shapes coming out of the, the middle ground. And I'm gonna start with my, the, the neutral mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I'm mixing up a nice liquid pool in my palette cup. Maybe a little too thin. Dropping some water into that to blend the bottom into the, the suggestion of, of ground vegetation. So this is going to need to be done in stages so that I can uh, create the, the density and the, and the suggestion of depth, but that's, that's a pretty good start. Uh, I'm going to change to a smaller brush and um, paint in a few smaller tree trunks. I'm going to use a liner. Uh, this one's a little big. I'm going to try my Windsor Newton Sable Rigger, this is a size one. And I think I will try a different color. I'm gonna move to I'll use my Da Vinci Haynes Gray. Should be a little bluer than my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix that I've been using. But not nearly as blue as my other ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix or as the Windsor Newton Haynes Gray. into the, the passages that I paint, just p finished painting with the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mix just to create perhaps the, the suggestion of shadows being cast on these tree trunks and to create a little bit of chromatic interest. a little bit of that into my evergreen trees over here too. Once again, this is the Da Vinci Payne's Gray. Good. All right, I'm gonna walk away from that for the moment. And uh, I think I will come back to the sleigh and um, start to develop the, 
the iron work that's in the sleigh. Um, I'm going to use my neutral tint and um, I think I'll start with this band that wraps around the front and under the belly of the sleigh. This bush is probably a little too big. I want to try to preserve the flowing lines of the sleigh as I paint this in, which means that I need to be very careful about my edges and I need to also be careful about how the passage above that crossbar relates to the passage below it. Make sure that they read as one and the same, just interrupted by the by the crossbar. Oops, I just put my heel of my hand into the wet paint in the in the tree line. Didn't really want to do that. Fortunately I got away with it. That looks pretty good. I'm going to try to um, paint in the, the iron on the bottom side of the, the shaft that connects the, the sleigh to the horse. It comes up just shy of the the strap of iron that I just painted and there's not much visible on the roughly horizontal section of the, of the shaft as it wraps around the, the bend it becomes more visible and the wooden Part of the shaft becomes less visible as it becomes as the shaft becomes vertical. Pretty good. Not quite as smooth as I'd like it to be, but given the scale, only so much you can do. I think that's better. At the risk of making a real mess of this, I'm going to try to paint the the runner that's up above the shaft. These calligraphic lines, if they're done well, add a lot of visual interest to a painting like this, but they're kind of high risk elements because they're so fine and um, in order to be successful, they need to be uniform in line weight and, um, and they need to flow nicely. So far, so good. I'm gonna switch to a liner, I think. I'm gonna try my, my low Cornell number one, quite a bit finer than the Windsor Newton number one that I was using just a minute ago. All right. 
looks pretty good. It's uh, not perfect, but it's not bad either. My biggest complaint is the, the line weight isn't really consistent, but it also doesn't appear to be in the in my photograph. It seems like the the runner is a little wider in some areas than in others. I may be wrong about that. I've gone about as far as I can on on the ironwork for right now. Uh, I think the Christmas tree is actually looking a lot better than it was the other day. After it, now that it's dried, um, it's got a lot more dimension to it. Uh, but I, I think I'd like to develop that a little bit further. I'm just suggesting some particularly dark shadows here. Using the Caroline green, sh shadow green. I honestly don't remember which one I've got on my palette. I have both in my paint box, so it could be either one. That's good. I'm going to move up to, to these spruces or hemlocks here and uh, suggest a, some um, trees behind them. I'm going to go in with my the same shadow green. Using a fairly large brush, painting right over the passage that I painted earlier. Lift a little bit of that to push the, the background trees farther into the background. That looks okay. I think I'll go back to the, the faces of our sleigh occupants and see if I can paint in a suggestion of eyes. big and a little dark. That's better. And even the driver isn't terrible. That's better. I'm going to switch to a tiny brush. I was just using my number one best. And these number one, these, these best brushes, I have them. And besides the number one, I've got a three aught, a five aught, and a ten aught. Oh, I've got two five aughts here, but I do have a ten aught. I've got two ten aughts. So. They're really quite tiny. This is the number one, three aught, five aught, ten aught. So these are these are really very good for um, for minute details. They're so minute that um, the hard part is controlling the motion of your hand. If you're working that small. Any, any movement at all gets uh, amplified quite a lot. So I'm adding some shadows in the corner of my driver's mouth. And I think I better connect them because she looks a little toothless. 
Porsche may have been hanging around with my Windsor Newtons a little too much. Seems to want to split too. But the nice thing about these best brushes is they're inexpensive. So I actually have two of each size. It's a little too dark. It looks more like a mustache than a mouth. Good enough. Yep, that's good enough. So while I'm here, these tiny brushes. Might as well add a little bit of color to her the pin in her hat using the yellow ochre. And I want to stay away from the, the neutral tint that I used to paint the hat itself. I think that's fine. Just a suggestion of kind of a gold color. The Christmas tree is looking pretty good. Um, I think my, uh, my shadows are maybe a little too strong. So I'm gonna just wet it with sort of clear water. I'm gonna use my brush so I have a little more control than my paper towel. That's good, I'll leave that alone. Coming together nicely. Um, I might as well do the next stage of the, the wood line. I'm gonna go back to my number, number one Windsor Newton liner. Actually, I think I'll try the number two. The number three looked a little big. It could work for, for some, some of the trees, but I think it's too big for most of them, but the number two might work fine. I'm going to stay away from that area for the moment because the riding crop, the whip, cuts right through there. And I, I guess it doesn't matter. The, the whip is darker than the, than the tree line or in the photograph. I'll just try to Make sure that whatever I paint there is light enough in value to it won't overwhelm the the crop. Still need to add in quite a few more trees, but um, it's definitely moving in the right direction. I'm going to switch to a smaller liner. I'll go back to the number one Windsor Newton for the moment. some of the, the iron struts that support the, the runners back to the neutral tint. And I've got my number one low Cornell. These are really quite light compared to the, to the wooden parts.
the wet paint in the tree that I'm trying to avoid. It's making it really difficult to control my brush. Like putting it out at the end of a selfie stick or something. So I, I started to develop the, the driver's mittens and I did as much as I felt was safe and left it for later and then I forgot to go back to it. So let's go back to that right now. I don't like this. These uh, passages of white paper in the middle of, of the painting. Good. So I've got a couple of little details on the on the shafts that I can do. There appears to be a parallel shaft behind this shaft here, the, the lighter wood shaft that I painted earlier. And then there are leather straps that secure the two together, wrap around both, same up here. I'm not going to get too fussy with this because, again, the painting is quite small in scale, so these kind of details really don't deserve a lot of development. If, if you develop them too much, they, they pull the, the eye away from what's really important, which is the horse and the sleigh and the, and the occupants. Let's go back to my the iron struts. I painted in the, the straight ones. There are a bunch of curved ones that attach the, the struts to the, to the body of the sleigh. Painted in all of the, the iron struts that that support the, the wooden runners, and um, and I painted the reins. And at this point, I think I'm ready to to stop for the for the time being. I need to live with the painting a little bit and uh, and kind of um, separate myself from it and uh, figure out what I have left to do. Uh, it's getting very close. I, I obviously have more to do in the tree line. Uh, there's some, some touch-up that I need to do on the horse and the harness. Uh, the sleigh is looking pretty good. The, the occupants are, are okay. Um, the, one, the driver looks like she has a bit of a, of a mustache, but uh, I'll see what I can do about that. Um, anyway, it looks like I actually missed one one of the iron struts. So I'll use the same brush that I was using before, which is my 3 out best. And it is right here. That's better. All right, so I'm gonna call it a day. Um, so. Thank you for watching, and uh, if you're enjoying this, if you're getting something out of it, I would appreciate it if you would like the, my video, and uh, please subscribe if you'd like to see more instructional videos like this, or see what else I'm, I'm coming up with, and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.